previously on JW Classic VW. When is Rucker Geometry going to be important? Dial to this time two to two to zero lash to the top of the dial indicator because that's where your preload you're going to see it. Fourteen foot bounds. <laughs> Fourteen foot bounds. Times and come back and check that. Uh... And now we continue with part two about geometry. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and today we're going to be talking about. I don't know, what do y'all think? We got some rocker arms here and a solid rocker arm shaft kit. Today we're doing some lateral rocker arm geometry and also a little bit about upgrading your rocker arms. This is my co-host, <laughs> Goose, my 56 oval window rack top. That's where we bring us to this. This is a uh, solid rocker arm kit. And what it does is it replaces these clips on your rockers and also the wavy washers that are inside of here. Now, what happens is whenever you end up upgrading either you get a bigger cam or you get a, a larger setup like this over here what ends up happening is the uh, amount of stress that's put on your stock rocker arms increases quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys in a little closer so we get a better look at this. So when you're looking at this stock or original type of rocker arm setup they're they're perfectly fine for uh, any kind of stock application you know anything up to 1600 is good to go the problem is when you run into a larger camshaft that these wavy washers that are inside here you know wavy washers inside here due to the valve lift and the amount of stress that's put on these rocker arms that those wavy washers can break the bad thing about that is when they break they end up inside of your uh, your oil galleries or down into your oil pump area and that's just no good that could cause some serious failure issues these washers right here not the wavy washers but there's there's some solid washers in here you can keep those to help get your spacing right when you go to set them up for your your heads and you also want to keep the stand the spacers right here these uh, stand spacers but that's uh, on the rockers too you can replace your little swivel feet this time too or not so we put a little feed this time too but you want to go ahead and inspect them first you might not want to or you might not need to so let's go ahead and uh, open up this package and see what we got Instructions. So we got some instructions. These are uh, pretty decently priced on Amazon. I got these ones for just under 40 bucks. You've got your uh, your hardware that comes on here. Yeah, some choices in that it seems to have to supply some additional hardware. Different grade hardware. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with probably the higher grade hardware. 
You have your washers for the ends down here. Hold it all together. And a lock washer. Whoa, let's get this little So, we have an assortment of strings in here. All different gauges when it comes to the shims. Yeah, lots of shims. So that's good. It's a, it's a good kit of uh, a bunch of different shims for us to put this together. This is the spacer that goes in between. This is probably shipped with a, uh, or it seems, feels like it's shipped with a little bit of uh, uh, protectant that they put on here. Look at that crap falling out. <laughs> what the hell is that stuff? They are shipped, like I said, with a uh, little bit of something on on these rocker shafts to uh, protect them when they're being uh, being shipped so they don't get all rusted up. So general assembly is. In the center here, you're going to have your actual spacer on the rocker arm. Let's go ahead and take apart one of these ones. Taking one of, the, one of these apart at a time so that you can remember how it goes back together for the most part. Like I said, these wavy washers, those are going to be going. Uh, well, you can keep them. You never know. Somebody you know might need one of them, but uh, we won't be reusing these wavy washers. That's all you have left. You can actually make solid rocker shafts out of this uh, shaft by tapping and drilling it, but uh, yeah, for the cost of 40 bucks, we'll go ahead and stick with the uh, ones we ordered. So the key to the assembly of your rocker arms on a stock application is that as you're spacing out, you're spacing out your actual rocker arms here. You want to make sure that you have a little offset, not perfectly, not perfectly centered on this application, but you want to have a little bit of offset to, to one of the sides, to the right or, to the right side or to the left side. I'm going to say more to the right side of the actual valve. And what that does is it as the rocker arm pushes down, it turns the valve so that your valve seat, you're looking at your valve seat on the other side of your heads, so that your valve seats don't get worn in one place. Alright guys, now taking even a better, a little more closer look at the head, at the valve stems at the end of the, each valve. This is where you're going to see and this is where your spacing comes into play. On your rocker itself, you want to have the little your little adjustable tip. Now, we're going to continue with the stock application, which is going to be a little bit offset on this, and kind of show you guys what we're doing with that. When I'm talking about lateral valve geometry, that location in which you have your rocker on the end of the valve tip is that is your lateral valve geometry whether you have that perfectly centered or off to one side it really depends on the application that you're trying to use it for 
when you have your rocker arm set up, one of the ways you can check to see what your rocker arm geometry is, is you can paint the ends of your tips here, or the ends of the lash caps, with a magic black magic marker, and it'll show you where the actual rocker arm is riding. So I'm going to go ahead and take off some of the shipping coating on here. Try it with a little bit of PB Blaster, see if that works. That's working pretty good. Get that shipping crap off there. And be careful while uh, putting this together because it's sharp. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of a white lithium on here to start the, uh, the assembly. Just a little thin coat to help with assembly. Now, you might not wait. You might want to wait until you've until you've got it figured out, like what shims you want to do. But this is just for uh, the exercise of showing you guys how to do it. So, grab a couple of stem washers again. Alright. Now, these washers do have a flat and a beveled side. I put the flat side out to meet the actual rocker arms. So, there's the first two. This will just give us an idea of how off we're going to be when, uh, this come, when it comes to assembling this. I'm not sure. The little oil passages in there are interesting. <laughs> it's a nice way of saying it would be a pain in the butt. So let's just set this up here for a second and just get an idea of where it is. That is way off. That's way to the right. Both of those, that's way to the right. Which tells me we probably want to use the thinnest, the thinnest washer we got. So let's take these thicker ones off and move to the thinner washer. These washers are what's sharp. They will get you. So be careful. washer I got. Let's put the arms back on, the rock arms. Let's see where we sit. This whole process here of finding out where these rock arms are, that's your geometry. And that's way better. That actually looks like it makes sense where it is. That's good. Let's go ahead and put another thin washer on. I'm going to use the thin washers for now. They seem to be the way to go. Now you can um, remove some material from the rocker arms, you know, some sandpaper and sand off the, sand down the blocks, the blocks themselves and or the rocker arms to get your assembly more correct. 
be everything more dead on where you want it to be. So let's go ahead and do the thin washer again. And you can see it's going to be a probably a pretty thick washer at the end down here, or a couple washers at the end. See that spacing right. I'm thinking that we might want to use a thicker washer here. So this is just trial and error. You go back and forth playing with these washers until you figure out what works best for your application. And then cap it off. And this is just temporary while I'm figuring out the fit. But the ends are the bolt, the lock washer, and the bigger washer. I believe this is a 13 millimeter nut that's on here, or bolt that's on there. Hey, look at that, it's starting to look like a rocker arm. <laughs> All right. I can see by the spacing that I'm gonna have to come a little bit more. Let's go ahead and try it out. Test fit. See what it looks like. So right now, the way that it is, my rocker arms look pretty good where they're landing. Let's continue assembly. See how it starts to look. Alright. Let's go ahead and do a thick washer on this side. See if we need that for this stand to be where it needs to be. Oh, well, that's pretty close. That thick washer is just about on the money. Let's do a thin washer. I'm using up these thin washers pretty quick, so we're probably going to have to come back and replace some of these with some thick washers. And don't forget, we still have the old washers we can use, too. washer. Alright. That's the general idea. Those are all pretty good, geometry-wise. It all those all look really good. And the geometry side of this, your your lateral geometry, is looking at the foot and where it is in relation to the valve. Like this one looks like it could probably come over a little bit more still, but that's going to require shifting across the board. Well, not really across the board, I guess. What you may end up doing for this is 
is shaving or sanding down the block itself to try to get this over. The thin washer that I have in here is, is you know, that's about as thin as we can go. But you do want it off to the side a little bit, and it's pretty close. It really is pretty close. This one over here is pretty close too. And your last one, that one's about, that one's about dead on. Like I was telling you, you want to have it off a little bit. And that one's dead on, so we might want it like a thinner washer here. But like I was saying, what you're going to do is you're going to go back and forth and try to play with the washers to get the best geometry you can. And you can also sand down the blocks to give you some more space. Also the rocker arms themselves. Take a look at the, uh, the larger head. And you can see that um, once you get to something more of this setup, the need for a solid rocker shaft is, is a necessity because these springs, the pressure on these springs and, and the amount of RPMs and force you'd be pushing out of a CB head would definitely kill one of those uh, rock arm assemblies and, and uh, wavy washers everywhere. So I hope this helps you guys out. This is another little bit of uh, information from us over here at JW Classic VW and uh, a little bit of uh, upgrade for your car when it comes to rocker shafts. It's inexpensive and it's cheap insurance to make sure that you keep these uh, little sticks of dynamite, <laughs> these wavy washers, out of your uh, out of your engine and keep it from destroying anything. So it looks pretty good and uh, it's going to be a nice little upgrade for my single port engine. All right, guys. That's all for now from uh, JW Classic VW. Uh, talk to you guys later. See you on the next one. Uh, tech tips will be coming up soon. Have a good night, guys. Bye.